What's up, y'all? This is Jesse Warden again. Today we're going to cover unit testing for uh, Lua and Corona using the Luna test library that I've slightly modified to make sure it works with Corona SDK and doesn't scream and yell and doesn't automatically close when it's done. So uh, what is uh, unit testing and what is Luna test? Well, first off, unit testing is where you write code that tests a lot of your app, make sure it works, and then you get something called coverage, and that is a lot of unit tests that uh, test many different areas. And that way, if you have a lot of test coverage, then anytime you make a change, uh, you don't have to worry about making a change in one place and it breaks something in some other place, right? So it helps, even if you write good code, it still helps keep things in check. And the reason that's important for something like Lua is uh, the same reason it's important for something like JavaScript, and that is that you have loose typing. Um, anything can be anything. There is no compiler to help you very much. So once your code is run, uh, things can change dynamically at runtime. So you need code to test to make sure it actually works at runtime, that your classes are expecting the right things, etc. So that is why um, unit tests are good and powerful. And as you, the more code you write, um, it also helps keep that code stable over time. So if you add new code. So let's take a look at uh, what LunaTest really is. So LunaTest is uh, an open source project on GitHub that was created by this guy called Silent Bicycle. Um, he, it, it, he, he borrowed some of ideas from the uh, Lu unit or whatever it's called, but he has an X unit style of doing things. So he's really got some really nice stuff. It's, it's not shown actually here on his README. Um, and he, it's also used more for an embedded system type of thing. We're using Lua and embedded systems. It's not really used for a graphical way, but I'll show you how it looks on R. So you'll notice that you don't really see anything here. But if you look in the terminal, you can see all kinds of goodies. Um, it'll actually print out what it's doing. So I have some print statements that do these lines, but the rest of this is all him. So it'll run my uh, test suite. Suites are, are basically a collection of tests on specific areas, aka a bunch of functions in Lua, <laughs> right? So that's all really a suite is, at least in the, the definition of Luna test. And I have a couple suites here. I have one that does all my service classes that actually load and uh, parse external data, um, ones that deal with reading files and writing files, and things dealing with my state machine, which I talked about earlier today. So you can see I've got 14 actually tests that passed, zero failed, zero errors, and zero tests that were actually skipped, right? I'm not skipping other things. And 121 assertions, right? Which is, means that I want to assert things that are true or say, this function should never be null. And if it's null, it's an error, right? <clears throat> so you know, it took about five um, milliseconds to pass. And you always want unit tests to be fast so they are not a problem and you can constantly run them fast. As soon as unit tests become slow, you don't feel like maintaining it. You don't feel like you know make sure in your tests, and therefore they don't help, right? So Luna test really expects you to um, follow all the standard testing practices, whether you use TDD or test driven development, or if you just write unit tests, whatever else. All right. So what I wanted to show you was the uh, docs for Luna test. So if you go to Luna test here, or the file doesn't matter which, <clears throat> he basically has documented all the methods that he has. All the methods that he offers are actually not in these docs. Uh, I believe he probably co-generated it with Python or something and just hasn't kept it up to date. It's a lot of work. But there are some things such as um, assert not nil and assert nil that are not documented in here but are you know very commonly used asserts. So um, all the common things that you would expect from asserting less than greater than if it's a stri string, if it's a certain type, even meta tables, pretty cool and specific to Lua. So. You know, the standard thing of suite and everything else is what I want to really talk about. So let's go show you that. So the way you use LunaTest is you basically just require LunaTest. That's it. As long as you have this file in your root right here, it'll work just fine. You then add your suites as, you know, you need to. Or you can put your test in line. But I like to add suites because it's more organized. And then you say LunaTest run. That is it. One, two, three. Now what is a suite? Well, let's go check out a suite. So I'm going to show you my, uh, let's see, what suite should I look at here? Let's look at the read file suite. So you'll notice I'm using the module package CR. All this really means is that you actually get an object reference to the package when you load it via require. So if you don't do this, require will say true. It'll shove everything in the global namespace. If you include this, it'll actually return a reference to that module. And uh, there's some certain exposure you can do to global. But the point is that you need to keep that in here, even if you're using the standard class way that I do. 
for closures because uh, Lua test expects that it makes it easier to run. So just make sure you put this up top and you're good to go. Um, all, notice all the functions are global, there's no local test, and they follow uh, a couple things. So first is a test. A test is the word test underscore. Okay, Any function within here that has a test underscore will be run. So this is where you run your test, also known as test cases. right? I want to test that when I save a file with the name of test.txt, I can read it out again and the contents match what I wrote. Right? That's a simple test for testing this file. So anytime I make changes to these files or I'm running on a different file system on PC, I want to make sure that this code still works. So when I'm done, I say it asserts equal. And if it doesn't, I do this. Most of his assert commands have a second parameter that does text, which will, if it fails, it'll print things out. So for example, he also has other things inside of his stuff that uh, also print things. So you'll sometimes see your message on the end of his thing, which is a little confusing, but it is what it is. So we're going to make this test fail. And I'm going to show you what his says. So you can see now I got one failed test. And the fail is the sweet package name and the test function itself that failed, how long it took, and what it expected moo, but got whatever I put in there. And then you see your message after this little dash, right? So you could also add a new line. That's a very common thing I've done, seen people do where they go slash in, slash in. And then you can see it here, contents is not equal. Maybe you can add a tab just to make it a little more verbose. There we go. See? So that's fine. Whatever whatever you want to do. So anyway, that's how you do a test. You'll notice there's something else here too called setup and tear down. Setup and tear down are functions that are run before any test function is run. So I basically say, all right, let's delete the test file, make it clean if it's on the file system. And then tear down, delete it again, just in case I created something, right? Since I created the file and I read it out. So I want to make sure that the save file has no existing test file to make the test nice and clean and honest, right? And when it's done, I want to make sure I clean up my mess afterwards. Now, if I were to have 15 functions in here, each one of the setups would run, as well as the teardowns each time. So let's show you an example of that. So the state machine tests are some of the unit tests I have for my state machine. You notice I have one, two, three, well, a lot. Example of a multi-test test suite. This is my state machine suite, and it has a series of tests. It tests if the class even works. <laughs> it tests uh, to verify the initial state is, is nil, because uh, you haven't had set an initial state. Um, it verifies that the initial state is null or especially nil, but whatever with states. Um, so I basically do a ton of tests. Okay, each one of these requires the state machine be instantiated. So to make the code dry, I have a setup function that says, "Hey, make the state machine." So before any single one of these tests is actually run, it's gonna create a state machine. And um, you could technically nil it out if you wanted to do a teardown. So you could say, and then say, okay, now when everything create destroys it, let's make sure the machine is created anew and make sure it passes still. Let's go fix our other test that I broke. Say data, not a string, brother man. And this is why we have unit tests, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, see, really quick too. All right, so the state machine suite, even with the proper teardown, still works, and that's what's important. You should be able to play with code and mess around with it, and have full confidence that you have enough test coverage that you can break things and know that if it breaks, you know where it breaks. Or if you change things, you know it shouldn't break and it won't break because you have tests to tell you. Right? More tests, man. More unit tests. Good stuff. So that's the point of setup and setup teardown. Now, what is this setup underscore suite or suite underscore setup? Anytime any one of these test functions is run, the setup is run first, the test is run, and then teardown is run, right? Teardown. Each and every single one of these function calls and ensure that it's in a pristine state. However, this guy is if I need something for the entire suite to run. None of these can work, including the setup, if I don't first import the base classes, right? So I import all these base classes so I can make sure I can do a state machine or I can instantiate all the 
actual certs for particular states of the state machine and state state classes. Blah, 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 right? So that's the whole point of the sweep. There's also a sweep teardown as well if you want to delete these classes from the global state, aka underscore G, or whatever environment you're using. So for now, I'm just doing a sweep setup because I need the classes. I should probably do be good and delete them. I'll do that later and show you. Um, so let's see if there's one more. The services suite, same thing. Each one actually requires inline, right? It's not really pristine because it reports the class, but that's okay. I'm not really testing if the classes work. I'm testing if the, they go here. There is a way to make the classes, uh, the test random, which uses a, a pretty good socket plus date plus random seed way. So if you did have an issue where a class wasn't instantiated and a test had a requirement for it, that it would in fact fail. So there is ways of getting around that if you write crappy unit tests like me. <laughs> so it is there. Um, here's another one where I do a significant amount of certs in line. The problem with doing so many certs in line is that you're not really sure which one failed, even if you use a message. So um, you'll see a few unit tests like this. You, you should really only be testing one or two things, not 50 billion, right? So you can see these asserts fail, but it doesn't tell you like what line or whatever else. So this is actually a bad practice. You shouldn't do this. So that's just a quick uh, example of how you do tests on uh, on a simple code base. So I'll show you the actual code base for Luna test and how it looks like. So if you look at the actual base of um, Luna test, here's some basics that they show you that actually come with it. Again, he requires Luna test. He loads some suites in, but he also can do tests in line. So it'll actually look in line at the main file or whatever file you're actually running from for functions that start with test underscore, right? If it finds any, it'll run those, and then it'll run as well. So pretty cool that it does that. I haven't done uh, messed with uh, Lua coverage yet, but I really should. <laughs> so I'll show you what, um, again, some of their examples. So he, he does the sweet setup and sweet teardown. Um, this one doesn't actually have the whole setup and teardown, but again, it just shows an example of how you do that. The uh, error and uh, assert work as normal. He doesn't actually override via meta tables, the standard assert and error, so they work as, as is. You don't have to worry about your code being modified. Um, notice that this error will never actually run. Um, you can just return false from a suite setup or a test, and it'll abort. Oh, I'm sorry, suite setup and it'll abort, not from a test, sorry. Uh, let's see, what's the other one? good one? Yeah, here's the random one. So you can actually, using his uh, Luna test randomness, you can actually ensure that the tests are run in a randomized way, right? You set the seed. Now you can get your seeds elsewhere, but I just the fact that um, you know there, there's a, I believe he has a socket engine here somewhere. So one thing I wanted to point out too is that again a lot of his things aren't documented. So if you go into Luna test itself and scroll down here, by the way I added this so it doesn't abort um, if the tests fail. It used to close Corona. It would actually exit with an OS exit. So I turned that off. Um, I defaulted to I, I believe it's true by default in here, but I, I defaulted to false. Um, let's see. So if you scroll down, there you go. So you have fail, skip, assert true. Here's the two I forgot, like assert nil and assert not nil. These are really nice. I'm going to use them all over the place, right? So they were not in the docs, but these are, you know, some of the most important ones you're going to use with Lua. Um, there's a few other cool ones down here, too. I'm not really sure what they were at this time but anyway definitely go check through here he's got a lot of wonderful global um, cert functions that uh, really oh yeah the user data I forgot about that that was that was good for some of the uh, timer handlers and things like that um, yeah so that's about it uh, with L Luna test again it's just uh, to help you get some really good code coverage for your um, code and if you look at my test for the actual state machines again bring that up um, again you want you're trying to test certain behavior and certain small pieces, uh, really unique, really small and minute tests that test one thing and test it well. And then you get a significant amount of them, and then you have something called test coverage or large amounts of test coverage. Once you have that, you can make sure that your code is uh, really, basically you can play with it and not have to worry about breaking something completely unrelated in a different section. You can also add new code and make sure that what you're adding or modifying doesn't break break what you've already got, right? So you, it's that helps in something called regression testing, is that you test 
you know, things in the past that you don't expect to break that suddenly might, right, from, from changes that you just did. So unit tests really help with that. And considering Lua is a very dynamic language with no compiler help, having a lot of unit tests is really a must for any large code base. So again, I hope that was useful. Uh, check out Luna Test on uh, GitHub. It's a free open source project. And uh, I have a fork of it. So here's, it's called by uh, github.com slash silent bicycle Luna Test. That's where his stuff is. And then my modification of it is a fork that ensures that uh, it works inside of Corona. So I've made very minor changes, but if you check out my, my repo, uh, it'll, it'll definitely work with Corona and not automatically close it. Um, there was, a, I think, a Git environment call that he had that was causing Corona to explode. So that was one thing I fixed, and then the closed thing I also fixed. So, yeah, and then um, if you want to see an example of how it actually works, you can check out my zombie stick uh, repo. Or, let's see, where's all my repos? All repos. You can check out that one. You can check out, yeah, Zombie Stick has some unit tests. And where's this? And yeah, the State Machine. The State Machine also has um, some unit tests on how I run through my State Machine in the test folder at the root here. So if you'd like to see an example of what test suites can look like, not just tests on the main root, this is uh, an example file you can take a look at. Check it out and play. So I hope that was useful. Thanks for your time.